Welcome to Best Friends. It's our Valentine's edition. Do you have a loved one? Does your loved one have four feet? Get them a brick for the dog park. Memorialize your friendship and your devotion to them. This is my current office kitty. Um, I call her Cece. It's for circular cat. She's very round but very beautiful, Rubenesque. Look at that face. Who could not love it? And why, you might ask, is she living in my office? It's because we were afraid we'd have to use a shoehorn to get her into a kennel. But there were some other reasons, too. She just wasn't happy. And now that she is living in my office, she is more herself. She is a happier cat. Of course, that would probably be true of the hundreds and hundreds of kitties that we get here all the time, but um, it just seemed particularly so for her. And the other reason is, I just like her. She reminds me of me. This is Bagheera. Um, Bagheera has kind of been raised in our education and volunteer coordinator's office from a kitten. He's a little on the picky side when it comes to accepting humans that are not ones that have been around him for hours. However, um, he will, and without doubt, become a wonderful pet. He needs to be indoor only because he has the kind of temperament that will send him into a bush or under a house for hours if he's frightened. So you don't want that. You won't see him again. Um, but there, see, isn't he an elegant guy? Very handsome. Probably not a good kitty for a home that has young children because he's while not skittish exactly, uh, a little restive and anxious, as you can see. Right? Yes. This is Macy. I keep trying to think how I could work the cat into Macy's Day Parade, but I can't think of anyone. Uh, it's, you know, she's a parade all by herself. Um, she is a medium-haired tortie. And um, she is an absolutely lovely cat. She particularly likes little kids. And uh, she's very playful. She's not doing as well in a shelter environment as we would hope because this is kind of stressful. Um, she is enjoying, though, the children that come by. And uh, she's in one of our large um, cages out in the front office where she can uh, talk to people. She seems to be pretty much okay with dogs as well, um, which is a shocker. But if you have a friendly dog in your household and you were looking to add a cat and uh, you've got you know the normal contingent of kids or grandkids that visit, this may be the perfect cat for you. Um, I think she's just a sweetheart. She's really very tolerant of all of the weird things that uh, she sees going on. Well, weird from a cat's perspective, not so weird from mine. Right? Yeah, Macy. She's a good girl. She does love to be brushed, which is good because she has a medium-length coat that, uh, uh, that does well with brushing. We had a... Um, medium hair tortoise shell. This one is a dilute tortoise shell short hair, very short hair, very plush coat, and a very alert 
cat. She, this one, uh, in contrast with the other one, does not like other cats at all. Probably does not care much for dogs, and I'm not sure would be great with little kids, but with older kids, she probably would be. Being a tortoiseshell, she's a fairly opinionated cat, and um, that's, well, being a cat, she's a fairly opinionated cat, or being. Cats are, you know. Um, there are not many of them that don't have strong opinions about whether this is good or bad or worth their time. But I like her. She has a lot of personality. <laughs> I tried to get him to play, but uh, he only does that in his condo. He is three months old. Um, he was brought into us um, because we were told he wouldn't use his litter pan, but we have not found that to be the case. Of course, it's true. He is confined to a condo, which does reduce the number of options he has available, but he has not missed his litter pan one single time. And I think he is so cute. He has beautiful fur. It's that wonderful black, smooth, shiny. And then he has lovely little white markings. See? Not quite a tuxedo, but close, close enough that I would call him that. With adorable little white slippers. Just cute as a button. And the white whiskers really top it off. Who could resist that? Besides, a kitten in February? Good heavens, what is the world coming to? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is Poindexter. Poindexter, as you can see, is a silver Persian, purebred. Persians have this um, kind of problem with their face, which is that they don't have much in the way of sinus cavities, and they do have tearing and that sort of thing that happens. Um, so you do have to make sure their little faces stay clean. And um, Poindexter looks grumpy, but he's not, actually. He is... Uh, a pretty happy kitty as long as you don't touch his back or sides much. When he came into us he was a total mat and I suspect that that's why. It's because he doesn't like his back and sides messed with and so um, whoever had him kind of gave up on the brushing thing, but you can't do that if you have a Persian unless you keep them shaved down. Um, he still has some little clumps of hair here and there that I think could be dealt with, but you know, when you take a kitty to the groomer, um, there's only so much the cat is going to tolerate, and so you have to go about this thing in stages. Uh, I was I was very impressed that the groomer was able to get the mats out without shaving him down, which is what would normally happen. But that may still be an option in the future. Um, and then as it grows out, then chances are good that he will be less uh, adversive to being uh, brushed. Uh, he is just an adorable cat. I mean, who could look at this and not smile? You look like you were just born to be snuggled and spoiled. He looks like the cat on the Fancy Feast commercials, and I do believe he would consider a crystal cat dish an appropriate measure. forgot to mention that Poindexter, our silver Persian, is also neutered and declawed, which may 
be one reason he looks a little grumpy, but not really. All Persians look like that. He's really a pretty cool cat. This little girl is a medium haired, black and white, a sweetheart, just as loving a cat as you could ever ask for. She's been with us for a long time because when she came in, she was not in very good shape. She was thin to the point of emaciation and her ears had an entire, oh, company of mites living in them. And all of that is done with. We're through, they're gone. And she has put on enough weight that we are comfortable with her ability to um, go into a home as a contributing family member. Can you see she even has these wonderful tufts in her ears? One is white and one is black and lovely white eyebrows. Yes, what a pretty girl. She's, she's a youngster, but I believe that uh, she's going to stay fairly small. This is a spayed female. Um, she is very chatty. She loves to listen to people talk and she will talk back to them. I don't know if she's going to do that on camera. What do you think? Would you talk to us? Would you tell us what you think of your day so far today? No, she's really very interested in seeing the rats that are just off camera. They're very distracting to cats. Actually, they're kind of distracting to humans too. Um, but she is medium haired. Uh, she is a very tolerant cat. She's going to fit beautifully into almost any family that you can name. Um, there is one issue I would point out to you and that's that she's eight years old. Now, those of us who are mature individuals anyway do not see this as being a problem. Um, she has well over another eight or more years to give a happy family. And I do mean contribute. She is a loving, wonderful cat. And she's already housebroken and all of those things. I mean, goodness. She is so sweet. She's modeling her lovely coat for you. Very nice tail, you know. This is one of our other pets. You know, we have rabbits and guinea pigs and ferrets and things like that, although I don't think we have any ferrets right at the moment. Um, this is a guinea pig, sometimes called a cabbie. Um, they are um, wonderful pets. Um, I, they, they don't have the lifespan of a cat but um, they have the ability to be as a affectionate. Uh, they're very snuggly little guys and um, respond to you very much like any other pet would. Uh, they come when you call them and if, uh, if you're good, you can housebreak them. Um, often areas where they will not allow a dog or a cat will allow a guinea pig. Uh, this one in particular is wonderful. This is a little female. Uh, she loves her Timothy. And of course, this is an interesting experience since I am allergic to both Timothy and guinea pigs. But that's okay. I seem to be doing okay at the moment and we'll just keep it that way. <laughs> I may not bury my nose in her, but there we go. I'm sure she is deserving of having a nose buried in her because she is just such a loving, petable little creature. <coughs> Guinea pigs are one of the few animals like humans who have to have an ample supply of vitamin C 
supplied in their diet or as a nutrition extra. Um, they don't manufacture vitamin C on their own, just like we people don't. And um, that's just, you know, one of the interesting little things about them. We wanted to tell you, too, that we have a group of um, fancy rats available for adoption. I think there are eight, mm -hmm. seven or eight. Um, we have, um, they're mostly brown and white spotted, but they have the Rex coats. And um, they're very friendly. And if you are into rats, and many people are, um, these would be a great opportunity for you to acquire uh, some or one. Um, anyway, they're very interesting. And if you kind of look closely into rat breeds and, and genetics and so forth, they become more interesting. Um, most people kind of shudder because of the tail thing. I've never quite gotten that. but. As rodents go, um, rats and guinea pigs are terrific pets. Uh, they're very human-oriented, and uh, they have lived with humankind for many, many years, so their lifestyles kind of mesh with ours pretty well. Um, anyway, do some reading. Think about it. Come on by if you're interested. Now, rabbits, of course, are not actually rodents at all. They're lagomorphs which I have to admit is a close offshoot, but uh, also make terrific house pets. And uh, we have one of those that's available for adoption. I don't think we have time to show her to you today, but uh, we do have some great guinea pigs. We have a pair of them that are really funny too. Stick with us. We're going to go to our dog adoption area and look at some very interesting, a uh, very large dogs. I don't know how any day can be totally bad when you have a puppy to cuddle. This is one of a fairly large litter. Their lab and something. I have no idea exactly what the other part of that something is, other than totally adorable. They came in to us with um, Something going on with their little tummies, not the inside of their tummies, the outside of their tummies. They were all red and, and chapped and like they had diaper rash or something. But that cleared up within a day or two. Part of the litter is still out in foster care and part of the litter has come in and is available for adoption now. They have a very labby look to them. And since I don't know what the other part of it is, I don't know what uh, finish size is going to be on this group. This is a little boy, and whatever else he is, he has the disposition of a little angel. But like any baby, he's gonna take a lot of work. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I'm talking about you, yes. Can you see the camera? Look at that. It's wave hello. Say, so you can come adopt me. I'm just about mm, eight weeks old. And um, before very long, I'm going to be ready for training. Of course, that starts at the point that you get the puppy and it continues all of its life. What I'm doing right here would not be considered formal training, but the puppy is learning. And what he's learning is that humans are a good thing. They give me food and they give me snuggles. And both of those, fortunately, are things that dogs love. If they didn't love them, they would not be our best friends. <laughs> oh, Lord, I love puppies. This beautiful, beautiful boy is a purebred Doberman Pinscher, Doby for short, uh, has a wonderful smooth coat, 
Uh, he is just as pretty as a picture. He is about a year old. He is not neutered, and of course, <laughs> he will be neutered before he is placed. He is, um, Dopies are one of my more favorite breeds, and I couldn't tell you why. There's just something about them that makes me laugh, and um, they have this, this strangeness that is just Doby alone. Um, they don't even really understand how to play with other dogs, but they play themselves. They have a great sense of humor. Um, <laughs> They're wonderful companions. Um, there are, of course, movies that have been made about the Doberman gang and all of that that make them seem like scary beings. They are a terrier type, but they aren't frightening at all. Actually, they're gentle guys, although they have a lot of energy and they can be rambunctious. They really do enjoy uh, being snuggled and they pretty much have to be indoor dogs so you have to be able to provide lots of exercise that's lots of visits to the dog park and um, lots of walks and training because you don't want a dog that's this big and this strong to be doing something that could endanger himself or someone else and just his very activity level and size could do that if he hasn't been trained. I know! Want to talk to her? Oh, talk to her. Tell her you deserve a treat. Yes, look how focused you are. Whoa! Yes. Good job. Yes. Okay, it's going to take a special family. Definitely need a six-foot fence for this fellow. And um, I'm probably not little bitty kids, although Dobies are often very good with children. Uh, the only problem with this fellow is that he would flatten a child. Uh, he's, he's that energetic. Yes. You're very regal. This is Enzo. Enzo is a bloodhound. Yes, a true card-carrying, sniffing bloodhound <laughs> that also has an absolutely adorable personality. <laughs> and as you can see, is very nose-driven. We tell people about beagles being nose-driven. Whoa, that's not even close to this fella. This is just a, with all of the hounds, we suggest a lot of care in um, integrating them if you have a family cat or anything like that because sometimes these guys are totally, whoops, that's the wrong angle, dear, um, nose driven and prey driven and um, if something is running from them, their instinct can take over before they even know what's happened. So um, do a lot of reading about scent hounds before you consider an adoption. Uh, but as hounds and dogs just in general go, this is a lovely dog. His family was called away on a personal <coughs> emergency. Oh, that's the other thing about hounds. <laughs> they bell. Um, they don't simply bay. Uh, they have a very distinct sound that they make, and uh, it can be a problem in a neighborhood. Enzo, would you be still, please? Anyway, he is a big, strong boy, does need training. They need training like any other dog, uh, but a terrific potential for a family pet as long as you know what to expect from them and what they can give to you. <laughs> Which is lots of very moist love. Okay, are you ready for my favorite in the entire kennel? It's 
this one. This is the best dog in the world. He's been back in Stray, and I've talked to him um, for the whole time he was there, and he moved up to adoption today. He's still a little shaky because it's scary to change locations when you finally get used to one in a shelter, but this is a truly adorable dog. It's a male. Um, he's probably about two years old. He is, we think, most likely um, golden retriever and maybe shepherd. Um, he may have some Aussie in there. He may have, you know, the coloring would be kind of indicative of German shepherd. But the face is um, a little more Aussie, I think. A neat, clean dog. And just so human oriented, very affectionate. Like any dog, we tell you always bring the members of your family down so they can meet him too and you could have a, an opinion of how he would do with everybody. Um, we can test our dogs with the cats that live here at the shelter. I know, I know. There's just something about this one that kind of grabs my heart. I think it's the expression in his face. He is a truly beautiful boy, and he has a lovely heart. This is not deja vu. I know we started with a puppy that looked just like this one. This one isn't even the same litter. At least we don't think so. We're pretty sure it's not. This is a little girl. She is also about eight weeks old. <laughs> And she is a lab and something. Border Collie, maybe? Not sure. But whatever it is, she is just all adorable. All kinds of personality just popping out all over her little puppy body. And very food oriented. Always a good thing. We need to talk about chewing with your mouth closed. <laughs> Is that going to happen? No? Okay. <laughs> anyway, like all of our dogs, this one would um, have the appointment made at the vet by the time she leaves and um, would be scheduled for her space surgery. That's included in the adoption, incidentally, along with her first set of shots, except for rabies. Yes, I know, which for a little while longer isn't required by law in the state of Washington, at least not until next year. And uh, she'd also have her microchip and her license and um, a packet of really good information about how to go about finding training for her and how to deal with training at home. Because, as I said before, training is something that never stops with a puppy. You don't always know what you're teaching them until you've done it. And then sometimes you have to undo it, and that's harder, too. It's like the number of people who yell at their dog when the dog is barking. And believe me, I'm tempted sometimes myself. But what you're teaching the dog is, oh, mom really likes this. She's joining right in. <laughs> Probably not the effect you wanted to have. I know, yes. This is a cute little girl, and she's going to make some family very, very happy. As long as they invest in training and fence. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a record that only has one, one song to play. Well, with that, happy Valentine's Day. Have a wonderful February. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs>